Hello everyone, bonjour à tous, allo tout le monde, comment allez My name is Shirley Bruno and I'm the director of the film that you're about to see called Tézan. Um, it's a story that I grew up listening to, so it's quite near and dear to my heart. Actually, it haunted me growing up and it's also one of our oldest folklore. So it's one that lives quite richly and deeply in our collective imagination. I made the film in collaboration with the Charles family. They're neighbors of mine that live about 10, 15 minutes away from me in Jacmel, this seaside city um, where I used to live and where the film was shot in and around. There are literally infinite versions and interpretations of the story. And so I made this film in a kind of open-ended way as a tribute to the way stories like these are traditionally transmitted and shared, recycled and reinterpreted from generation to generation. And so I leave with you my version, our version of Tizan. Thank you. Hi, my name is Sylvie Weber. I'm the director of The Prophetess. The Prophetess is a genre-bending docudrama set in the DR Congo in Bukavu. And it's the story of a powerful, inspiring pair of women, Furaha and Venancy, who have survived psychological and physical trauma caused by sexual violence. And um, it's their story of sisterhood, of togetherness that inspires an entire community of women um, to set out uh, for a different future and uh, we hope that in sharing their story of um, struggle and rebirth uh, we can inspire more people to stand up for change and against those um, human rights violations. I hope you enjoy the festival and thank you for watching our movie. Hi everyone, my name is Hamine Naratu Varvun. I'm a filmmaker from Madagascar and I wrote and directed Razana. The word Razana means ancestor in the Malagasy language and it has a specific meaning in Madagascar since the population is practicing the cult of ancestor or the ancestor's cult. The story of Razana follows Sulu a gay Malagasy man from Paris who is returning to Madagascar to fulfill the last wish of his late partner who wants to be buried on his ancestral land. The reason is that in order to reach the status of ancestor in Madagascar, one has to be buried on his ancestral land following specific rituals. And in that process, Sulu has to deal with his estranged and homophobic father-in-law. The movie is structured in such a way that people will experience it differently according to their own sensibilities or interests. I wish you an interesting cinematic experience with Razana, Viluma. Hi, I'm Susanna Morgani. I'm a filmmaker from Sudan. My film is El Sit, which is the story of a young girl's arranged marriage in a cotton farming village in Sudan. Uh, so when we held auditions for this film, we really didn't know what to expect because Sudanese cinema was under government prohibition for a very long time and the revolution had just happened. So it was a really new uh, time for Sudanese cinema. But we were very pleasantly surprised because people were really excited about the recent successes of Sudanese cinema, especially uh, Amjad Abul Ala's Your Day at 20. So it's through auditions that we uh, found our younger actors for the film, uh, the beautiful Mihad Murtada who plays Nafisa and uh, Mohamed Majdi who plays Nadir, Talat Farid and Fatma Farid. Uh, the older actors in the film are all veteran stage actors. Sudan has a very strong history of theatre. So uh, a big thank you to the Doha Film Institute, the Sudan Film Factory and Highlight Productions for supporting this film. And I hope you enjoy watching this small window into uh, Sudan. Hello, honor and respect. 
My name is Riva Priscil. I am a performing artist, visual artist, author, singer, dancer, and I am of Haitian descent, grew up in Haiti and moved back to the States in 2004. And during my time living in Haiti, I had the honor and pleasure of studying with Madame Viviane Gauthier. And it truly was a highlight of my experience living there and has had a huge impact on the work that I do now. Um, Madame Gauthier was very specific. She knew what she wanted. She knew her stuff. She was very, very big on preserving the authenticity of the Haitian culture through dance, folklore, through the drums, through the rhythms through the foundational movements she was um just extraordinary she was extraordinary um as a child she could come off as intimidating or to an adult <laughs> as well um but it's because um she took her work so seriously and she really was dedicated and passionate to passing along that torch and i'll never forget when i found out that she passed um you know my initial reaction was of course sadness but i felt a sense of panic like who is going to carry this torch now for her who is going to do the work that she was so adamant about um and so it brings me joy that there are many of us who have studied with her and who have who have been um putting the work into preserving um that aspect of our culture through dance through music through art through through culture um and i just i'm so honored to have been invited to um, introduce this film and i i hope you'll enjoy it i certainly loved it and i believe that madame gutsi would be so honored and so pleased um with the the work and the way that the, we're honoring her through through this film donc en pile l'amour avec respect lots of love and respect and i hope you all enjoy merci I um, I've been giving it thought over, you know, like I mean, since well, for the last particularly ten years, when the 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 issue of identity and identification has been so significant and at the center of a lot of conversations here in the states, when, with part of black people and also um, in the diaspora in general. And um, one of the, 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 uh, the things that motivated me, it has to do, the film in a sense is, a, is a really a poem. I thought of it as a, as, a, as a poem. And in one sense, it mirrors my own um, sense of um, identification and th that going through that process. After all, being born in Jamaica, migrating, my parents migrated to the United States in 1949. I um, went, of course, to high school and went through that whole process of, of um, I won't call it indoctrination, of education, so being socialized. Um, and when I came to America, sometimes people ask me like, okay, so you came to America and like, why did you go to Paris? And I said, look, you know, for Jamaican, from my background, the, the key, the main aspiration was to become a metropolitan person. My own experience then became one. Yeah. I, mean, I, I was, you know, a creature of the metropolis, but of African background. The interesting thing is that my Jamaica, the Jamaican experience, and this is where it, it was, the Jamaican experience, I remembered Africa in the Jamaican context, of course, we, we hear about Garvey, we hear about Rastas, but the African aspect was always denigrated. And so I met Joanne Harrell. She lived okay. with a, a, a friend of ours and other colleague. And Joanne was not in, as it happened, um, particularly focused on her identity as such in the way, that, in the sense, Joanne Harrell's voice is my voice. Ah. So it is me see, oh, wow, here she is. There is a demand of an aesthetic, a European aesthetic in effect from D Dior. Joanne has to work, she has to adapt. She has to live 
And so she, she, she holds on to that, she appropriates that. But it's somewhere deep inside of her. And some, you know, one wants, one, there's that horizon of unity, that is that, that memory of Africa. Africa, yeah. both for ho those at home and those abroad. So in a sense, Jojo is my story as well. <laughs>